that showed the mountain, uh, the, the range, and the high point right there is called Sentinel Point. The Native Americans use that as a highway, you know, because uh, Bays Mountain runs from not uh, Blountville, uh, I mean Blunton County, all the way to Kingsport, and then there, there's a saddle right there, and right off the tip of that, the saddle is the Holston uh, River. Uh, Long Island. That's where a lot of treaties were signed in East Tennessee. So we, we got a lot of history going on in Kingsport. So I think that picture, the closest I could come to it, we didn't, I don't see a house, I don't see a road, um, but that probably in the 1940s and 50s from that viewpoint. And then the next slide is last week in the snow. Ain't it beautiful? So that's a little bit to the right of that last picture. So that shows Meadowview Parkway, uh, this is um, Devil's Nose. Uh, that's the highest point on the ridge. The ridge goes from all the way to Knoxville to here. And then the next, uh, the next highest point is our fire tower. So I'm not done. Okay. <laughs> so this is Highway uh, Interstate 26 coming to Johnson City from Johnson City to uh, Kingsport. So that's that right there. Uh, he goes to Colonial Heights and lifts his uh, drone and takes pictures. So that's what 70 years later 60 years later all those roads and stuff so it's a beautiful base mountain in the snow last week so if, if you could go up here and fly like a like a drone um on to the right is kingsport and to the left right here is knoxville and this is blunt county so this is bay's mountain the highest point right here Base mountains right here, and all the way down, here's ridges and, and mountains stomped kind of in Blount County. So this is a super highway of animals. So this is the Tennessee Valley where Holston River is. Flinch Mountains over here, so we're a valley. Uh, and then over here is uh, the Smokies, which is right down here. So there's two valleys, the Great Valley. So that's how people travel in the valleys and on the ridges. So that's how, that's kind of the, uh, Base Mountain Park is, the lake, you can't even see the lake, it's kind of right there, right there. And we we own all of the back mountain and all the way down to the river over here, it's Laurel Road. 3,500 acres. We started out, uh, people live there, and then we started out, uh, you know, as uh, 1,300 acres uh, of watershed because we had a water supply to Kingsport. So Bays Mountain lies within a territory once inhabited, you know, of course, by the Cherokee because most of us probably are a little bit Cherokee. Um, Base, Mount, uh, Base Mountain was known as the Cherokee as the Sentinel Point because when they travel, they travel in the highways, I mean, you know, man-made highways, byways, ridge tops, and valleys. So the Sentinel Point was a sentinel, if you're, you know, your, your Cherokee history or any kind of Native American, they have a sentinel to direct you because when the Great War Pass is going on, the Great Treaties, Somebody was there for directions, and that was the easiest way to go. This is the Holston River. That's Kingsport, so uh, Sentinel Point points toward right towards, if you go down that that ridge, that Sentinel Point, we went out there at Christmas time and seen all the lights of Kingsport, it's really pretty cool. And you go down that hill, and then across the, uh, across the little saddle, you'll walk right on and swim <laughs> the river to the Long Island of the Holston. Mostly it's Eastman now, but it uh, used to be historic. That's where uh, all the treaties were signed in the, in the northeast. In the, I mean, south, southeast, sorry. Settling of Base Mountain. The closest we could come is 1760. Dr. William uh, Hamilton and his family purchased land and settled on Base Mountain. This was the first documented land purchase. Uh, Hamilton and his family lived on the mountain for about 15 years um, before they uh, began to, everybody else began to settle there between 70, 75, and 82, uh, other families was settling the mountain. Can you imagine living on top of it? It was a pretty steep mountain, uh, and they call it Bays Mountain. Anybody kind of have an idea why it's called Bays Mountain? Bays is a horse, uh, a bay is a horse. That's my, fa that's my favorite story. That's really not, um, that's what, what was known. Um, the bay lived on the, uh, lived on the mountain, and every time they tried to catch her, she would run to Bay's Mountain in, on the steep gorges and disappear. So that's the Bay's Mountain. Uh, or the mountain laurel is called Rose Bay, and it is all over the place. So there's two, and we can never find anybody named Bay's 
that settled there. So that's out the door. So I like the horse better. I like the horse better. Now these are families that some of the parks named after, like Ledbetter Gap, Biggins Gap, uh, Dolan Branch, uh, Goad. I, I went to school with some Goads. Me and Gail probably went to school with all these all these guys, uh, last names, because that's, uh, she's a, she used to be a wall and she married a wall first and they owned the back part of the mountain in Hawkins County. Uh, so William King, Kingsport, uh, that's kind of uh, why that was named. Um, so that's the first names uh, kind of to settle the mountain. I love pictures. I love all the pictures. Um, um, you know, they, uh, that's the Simpson family. I would just go with Simpsons. Um, Gail did too, so we, we're, we're from Hopkins County. So we know all these uh, all these people. We went around Bates Mountain before the day. Bates yeah. Mountain. Yeah, because you know, we were Hopkins County and we just had to uh, go down the road on a motorcycle or you know, for a four wheeler. We owned a motorcycle at the time and kind of go in on the back end. Uh, I got caught, yeah, but it's okay. Um, but that's, we, ha we could do that that way because my parents wouldn't let us go up the super highway. You know, they wouldn't let us travel to Kingsport, but they would let us travel across the river and then up the mountain. So that's how we got there. Uh, that's Miss Mr. Larry. Uh, Richard Netherman, this is pretty cool. This is a pretty cool picture because that uh, does anybody know what 11W, I mean 11W North, 11W South, oh, it's a big, huge highway. Uh, that's one of the first highways from uh, Georgia all the way to Maine, and I've traveled it all the way. So that's 11W, that used to be 11W, and then they moved it, and then they moved it, and they moved it, so it's way up the hill now. So that was the main tr travel from Knoxville, oh. north and west. Um, he purchased the, of a lot of acres, and he opened the inn and people come to the inn and pay him to let them hunt. So that's the, that's the first thing he did. But that, that building is still standing today and it's a museum now. You can go in and, and they're all dressed in you know 1700s. Um, that's pretty cool. Um, the 20th century, There's, they unearthed the kitchen part, and there's a schoolhouse also in the back, um, 1700, 1750 schoolhouse. It's a one roof schoolhouse. Uh, can I say something? Yeah. What, uh, what did they unearth a few years ago? The foundation of the kitchen. The I think it, it, I think it was the kitchen to the right. So of course, you know, all these years they buried this and buried that. So uh, that now that's a preservation site. They unearthed things. Uh, the schoolhouse was there. Uh, what else is there? Uh, a church, a little church was there. Um, and the flood of 1977 come up past the front door as you can see the water line. So if you go, there, I think it's two dollars, three dollars to go tour, and it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool thing. Okay. Okay. Um, 1907, Jack Red Johnson and some of his cohorts, some of the Kings, early Kingsport settlers, begin to buy land on top of the mountain. Um, Bays Mountain, you know, is long, but Bays Mountain Park was never beginning until 1967, 1970. So they built a dam because they said, well, we need to get water. We need to get water to the to the town and what's easier by gravity. So they, they bought the 1,300 acres and it's called a watershed. And every time it rained, it, it went into this lake they formed and they formed the, uh, the dam out of the sandstone they queried here at the mountain. So the sandstone is, be still there and it's over I mean 1917 when they finished it so it's 104 years old it'll be 105 years old in May um, so it's really really pretty cool it's made by sandstone uh, preparation of the area they did log the area of the lake because um, a lot of people say oh there's there's buildings down there and maybe they flooded the lake no uh, it's all logged and all done um, so they, they created the lake and then later they upped it for six about 1918 they upped it by six feet to hold more water because they wanted Eastman in there they wanted the wood we're industry Johnson City School 
Bristol's the father of country music. So we, we done something. So we had all this industry. And that's how the, well, the Kingsport, Eastman, uh, Kingsport Chemical Company, Eastman Chemical Company was there. And they started probably about 1919, and they were up and running by 1920. And guess, guess you know, I mean, Eastman was in with the Manhattan Project, too, and Oak Ridge. So that was our really good stuff. I like to do this. Okay, this is <laughs> a rowdy crew of uh, uh, these people are valley people. Uh, but that man that's standing right there is uh, Mr. Slackhammer, and he's from New Jersey. And he was the kind of the uh, architect of the dam. So he don't look like he's been working, you know, he's just the architect. And all these guys, their grandfathers, people come up and tell me, well, my grandfather worked on the dam. My great uncle worked on the dam. So there's people still around that worked on the dam. And it was really hard because, you know, there's no machinery up there. They rode horseback and pulled poles, and that's how they done it. And, and a lot of, uh, um, some families uh, had sleds and they pulled the rocks up the mountain. Uh, the next picture um, shows, I think, the major, how, how they done all the work with the pulleys in the, yeah, see all those pulleys? And that's how they lifted the sandstone. Uh, these sandstones I'm talking about are this big, this big. Uh, the dam from top to bottom is 30 feet. And this little hole right there was some people to crawl through, not me, they've already, they've tried to get me to crawl through that hole for years. I said, I'm not doing that. So on the top of the dam was a turning switch. So they could up the gate that was at the bottom of the dam to let all the water out. And they've done that one time before, before the lake, uh, before the park was formed. So they could uh, get all the non-native fish out of there and put, and then let it fill back up. It takes about seven to eight months to fill back up, according on the rain. Uh, so they refilled it with native fishery, native fish. Uh, me and John goes fishing quite a bit because we catch fish for our watershed. Um, so we've got largemouth bass, got gambusia, which is a little mosquito eating, mosquito larva eating fish. So we don't have any hardly a lot of mos no mosquitoes on the lake, but all, of course all around it. Um, we have all types of bluegill, uh, beautiful bluegill. Uh, what else? Uh, catfish, channel cats, and bullhead cats. Uh, the new water department is, was placed in. Uh, did you say the name? Yeah. Go back. Go back. Okay, I'm not done. Okay, don't touch. Okay. Uh, in the mid 1940s, um, when we had the dam, 1917 was the water that going down the dam, and then Kingsport grew. Of course, Eastman come in. Uh, Dontar, it's not Dontar now, but it was the milling company and the cotton company, the cotton mill. So they needed more water uh, in different parts of the city. So they built a new water department in 1929 and it started working in 1929 and still today, it still works today, beautiful building. And then in the mid 1940s, water stopped flowing to other parts of the city because the other water department covered the city now. So about 1951, it's impossible to take water from the mountain down to the water pipes because the water pipes kind of broke it through cast iron 10 foot, 12 foot water pipes. Can you imagine the lift in those? They had a water pipe crew and a dam building crew. So that's why it took about a year and a half. Um, the new water works was installed in the city right before the city, right before Eastman taking clean water. So that was done a long time ago, before the EPA and the, all this Clean Water Act and stuff started. Uh, many residents moved into the area making a wa new water supply if they, you know, needed. Um, in 1951, that's what I said, um, you can walk down the mountain, walk down the gorge and see the old water pipes that was laid in 1916, 1915-16. That's the new water plant that was built in the 20s. Uh, still a beautiful building. Uh, the Holston River is right over there, <laughs> right over those trees. And the Eastman, Kingsport, uh, Tennessee Eastman, it used to be Tennessee, uh, no, it's, Tennessee, uh, it's Kingsport, I mean, Eastman Chemical now. It was Eastman Photo, photo uh, what is it called? Kodak. 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 Eastman Kodak, yeah. But he, here's the Eastman. Right? <clears throat> so they wanted to take the water out before the town covers the plant, of course. Uh, the 1929, start market, the stock market crashes and started the Great Depression. And I can't believe Kingsport really grew good in the different Great Depression. 
and Franklin Delano Roosevelt is elected president, and he helped America pull out of the Great Depression by a lot of acts. The CCC was involved. Um, you know, just a bit like maybe 17 year old boys, 15 year old boys joined this and helped build America. They built toilets, they built uh, highways, byways, uh, Blue Ridge Parkway, a lot of the things in the Smokies um, put people to work and paid them a little money because you didn't need a lot of money and they sent their money home wherever they were from. Um, one of the groups called the City Conservation Corps built the roads and in, in within Bays Mountain and built the fire tower in 1937. So, very good. They set up camp, built the stuff, and took down their camp. Uh, the road around the lake was built in 80 uh, fi uh, firefighters, and they owned the fire, the fire um, tower, but we owned the land around it. And Bays Mountain Fire Tower, the big one, 60 foot tall Bays Mountain Fire Tower on east of the, the old ed edge of the Holston is a uh, named really Garden Mountain Fire Tower, not Bays Mountain Fire Tower. Bays Mountain Tower is on the other ridge over the Sullivan County. In 1965, now we're 1965, Mayor uh, Hugh Rule decided at the public's insistence, I remember I was seven years old when this happened, uh, that since Bays Mountain needed to be developed into a park because from 1951 to just laid up there. People went up there hunting and fishing and stuff like that. But it was so absolutely gorgeous, it needed preserved. And that's what uh, the Kingsport people wanted. So they, he appointed the Lewis and Allen and Goderal to formulate a pan, plan to make a park in the mountain. Um, so in December 1975, uh, 65, the committee was formulated to begin the park. So the park opened officially in 1971, but unofficially people had to walk up the mountain a mile and a fifth, I guess, if you wanted to see all that stuff because the park wasn't ready, the road wasn't ready. We didn't have a road up there. We had a horse trail. So uh, Eastman donated that land because we owned that land. We didn't own this land. So we had to have a road. So Eastman had that and they donated that and now we own it now. But that's uh, probably long, about 30 years we didn't own that land. And uh, that's the beautiful Stone Mountain Dam that we kind of started with. Uh, it's been refurbished since, about two years ago, it was refaced and uh, used the same grout that they did in 1916, 1915-16, um, and it's got better uh, replaced the fence uh, on the dam. Of course, when the dam was functioning, all this stuff wasn't here, it's just a straight line. And if we want to, um, to drain the lake to fix or whatever, it's going to be emptied right here, a half point, and down here, they're all the way point. And the dam is probably about 27 feet deep of water right there at the dam, at the overflow. Where did they get the stone from? Uh, at the mountain. They, they, it's a uh, sandstone. There's two quarries. And one is down in Dublin Gap, and they brung it up. And one was like probably about a mile and a half, uh, west mm -hmm. of the dam, and they just brought it in. So it was. It's all sandstone. Sandstone's very, very hard. Limestone is, you know, if you went in a limestone cave to a sandstone cave, you'll see the difference. Sandstone caves are not as pretty as limestone caves because limestone comes through the through the earth and just makes beautiful stalagmites and stalactites and all kinds of caverns and stuff. Sandstone don't weather as well. That's why Base Mountain's here because all the rain and all the stuff happened, and then here's the big sandstone left right here. That's why Base Mountain is. Um, 44 to 64, the area will become as base, uh, become as Bay Mountain Park as primarily loses a water resort, a uh, water reservoir, and a logging area. They didn't log very much because they wanted to, wanted to leave that most of that area in good shape. Um, logging ended in 1949. What we know, maybe the what I have known, two times two times the mountain's been logged. Um, between 1944 and 64, the mountain had visitors, of course. Uh, people will come up there like us and teenagers uh, from across the mountains and uh, down in Hawkins County. Uh, we, we hiked the trails. There was not really trails, but we made our own trails, I guess. Uh, hunters uh, used the, now nobody can hunt at all. It's a nature preserve, so you have to leave it as it's been. Leave it like it is. Oh, yes. I mean, you know. Oh, well, these people know stills, you know, I mean, if we're, if we're East Tennessean or kind of Southern, we know, you know, there's still still in the hollers and stuff like that. So because of the many uh, hollows and ravines, 
Uh, we didn't have, we don't have a flowing stream because it's in a natural bo uh, bowl, but when it rains, all that water goes in the earth and comes out really nice and fresh. So that's where, where the steels come from. And we found that steel um, when we were cleaning, you know, that, that was a clean the mountain. Uh, without roads or passable trail, you know, the mountain will say, yeah, can hide this steel here. So we've got that, uh, I think, the steel that we found in the farmstead on, on display. Uh, moonshine uh, steel is operating in the 60s. Um, are there moonshiners today? Yes. Thought, mm, of course they are. <laughs> Not that store-bought stuff either, you know. I mean, store-bought stuff is pretty good, but I mean, you know, uh, we still got them stuff, uh, that stuff going around. <laughs> December 66, plans. Uh, Thorne and Mahoney presented a pot, the DV plan for the park. And some of this did not come true, and I thank goodness it did not come true. Uh, leave all cars at the bottom of the mountain and get a cable car and just hike them up. That's one of the things I'm, I'm thinking, goodness, they didn't do. Um, construct a lake. We already had a lake. They were going to construct a new lake for picnickers and hikers. Um, and then camping facilities. There's no water supply on Base Mountain Park. We had to get it out of the ground to, for our spigots to work and our commodes to flush. So that didn't work. Um, so create a separate commission to oversee the park. We have Base Mountain Park Association. That's when you join the park and you get a whole year, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I'm not gonna talk about that more on the table, at the table. But there's, there's a commission, Base Mountain Park Commission, that we turn the money into that's left over to the commission and all that money is, if, if you belong to the park, it goes to the commission and the commission makes sure that money stays in the park. Now, when you pay regular $5 to get in the gate, that pays my salary and I appreciate that. So it's, uh, it's, it's run by two different entities, Bays Mountain Park Association and Bays Mountain Park the City of Kingsport. And it's owned by the city. Um, in 1967, Tennessee Eastman donated the property, like I talked about. Uh, National Audubon Society got in, involved in this nature preserve, and they give us guidelines to go by. Um, just uh, the guidelines are on the next page, I think. So they uh, they make several su several suggestions to this park, to this beautiful new park. Keep the area as a nature preserve. Um, suggested uses. Natural slip high controls, I do it all day. Self-guided nature trails, we do it all the time. Uh, natural history study, ecology study, photography, painting, sketch, everything that you would think a park would be able to do. Uh, build a residence for the caretaker, because we have to have a caretaker, that's Tennessee state law, because we have dangerous animals. You know, we've got wolves and we've got snakes. Uh, Robert Holmes became the first director of the park in 1968. So it was really starting before our grand opening. So we could go up to the park, we could hike, we had to hike up to the park. So, okay, this is what was, you know, in the, in the history files about what Audubon Society said. Seldom has a single site in one area uh, displayed so many good features, so many natural and diverse habitats, such as exciting topography and so much natural beauty. In their opinion, Bays Mountain has the potential for a nature park educational center when developed and will give Kingsport a distinction and unique unmatched by any other community in America. Whoa. I mean, and I think we do. Y'all think we do? I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it's a special place for me because uh, I guess all these animals work there. I live there and I love the animals. Okay, the grants started rolling in. Uh, Kingsport matched stuff and Eastman matched stuff and all the, all the people in, in, in Kingsport wanted the park 